such a great story of a team that's come from the ground and built themselves up. Not only in one football game, he's changed the culture for a college, a university, and a state. Rutgers University will host press conference to welcome the return of former and new head coach. One of the greatest football coaches that we've ever had. He's done it before. He's got more experience. There's more of a spotlight on his program. Jubilation in Piscataway. You can already sense the change in the attitude around the RU football program. This campus is in a football frenzy. And now to come back and be a member of the Big Ten Conference, it's incredible. The 2006 Home Depot College Football Coach of the Year. An example of you buy into a team, how much it can benefit you. You've got to take your hats off to Greg Schiano and the Rutgers football team. And the Thursday night magic strikes again! You have to respect Jersey because of the excitement that that man has brought. Well, it's Scarlet Fever here. Racing for the biggest moment ever. Greg Schiano has brought his team to be in. The new era of national prominence for Rutgers begins today. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's press conference to announce the new head coach of Rutgers football, Greg Schiano. Greg Schiano was introduced as the new head coach for the Scarlet Knights today. Time for the State University of New Jersey to hire a New Jersey guy. Just 34 years old. He's young, but he's hungry, aggressive, very positive. There was skepticism when Greg Schiano first came to Rutgers. He was young, he was unknown, he was unproven. Who is this guy? You know, is he going to be up for the job? I, mean, I don't think people really knew who he was. Uh, and then, you know, he dropped the, we're going to win a national championship at Rutgers, and I think people were, you know, what, what did he just say? And that seemed insane. Like, we just wanted to not lose by 80 points. Then you just, I mean, then you met him and you talked to him and you knew he believed it. Yeah, he wasn't just saying this as a soundbite. This is something he believed. I would dream of being a head football coach. And the one constant in all of that is this was the place I was thinking about. He's coached at the high school level, right on up to the NFL with the Chicago Bears. When the name came up and you, you started looking at the background, that was the stuff that made sense. That was the stuff that you said, OK, this is somebody who's been on the campus before, who grew up in the area, had been in places that knew big time football. He was standing up there at that podium and had an incredible presence about him. And you could tell that this was somebody who could really motivate because if you were interested in Rutgers football, you were ready to run through a wall for that guy. You can already sense the change in the attitude around the RU football program tonight. For the first time in years, there's hope with regards to the Scarlet Knights. I'm Kayla, and this is what I work for, to teach him, to protect her, and to take care of me too. I need health insurance that does the same, that makes it easier to see a doctor. So I don't have to worry. This is my life, and this is how Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey works for me, and him, and her. Rutgers Scarlet Knights come onto the field. They have one victory this year. You know, I, I just don't think people really fully comprehend where this program was when he took over. When I was little, I would come to games. This is the old Big E, so they were playing Virginia Tech. They were playing Miami. It was a hot ticket, but we were going to see the other teams, actually. High school football in New Jersey is massive. It, it, it's incredibly important. Everybody came from below or on top, you know, to kind of grab the best players. And if people know anything about New Jersey high school football, it's very highly regarded. And all of these New Jersey kids are playing at Michigan, are playing at Southern Cal, are playing at these other places where you just think, man, if Rutgers could ever find a way to keep these guys there, they could really find a way to break through. We are going to recruit the state of Rutgers. Today, he tried to enlist over 100 others. Every high school football coach in New Jersey was invited to campus this evening. Just no question about the fact that we, we needed somebody that we believed in. I'm extremely happy for Greg and proud of him, but I'm, I'm just as happy for the Rutgers because I really feel confident uh, that now we can get it done. I know the high school coaches that were in that room, and I know most of the people I've talked to feel that Greg is a, I think it's a great pick. There was a sense of excitement that there was a Jersey guy that was coming home 
this young, energetic coach. I just remember my high school coach coming in the day he was hired and saying, I think you're really going to like this guy. Uh, and he shared his, why go somewhere else to win? Why not win in your home state and be a legend in your home state? Uh, why not build something versus just trying to carry on something that's already been built? And I think from there on, it just became, that was just where my eyes were set the entire time was how do I get to Rutgers? And uh, obviously, he not only had to rebuild the roster, but he had to rebuild everything about the entire program, from its identity to its you know, uh, uh, facilities to uh, you know, academic help, everything. One of Greg Schiano's major accomplishments, and I'm not sure it's one he gets enough credit for sometimes, is the Block R, right? The Block R is everywhere when you come on campus now. It's ubiquitous, it's very recognizable and recognized as part of Rutgers. The Block R gave Rutgers an identity that it sorely lacked. And, you know, there were all kinds of logos in the past, but none of them ever really broke through. I, I know Coach Hiano fought hard for that Block R. Uh, Rutgers has had a, a bunch of different mascots and different logos, but uh, that, that Block R, when you see it, it means something. And when I drive around New Jersey or even other places and I see the magnet on people's cars, I'm like, man, this is special. And I think it's, you know, become a lot larger than just this university. I think it's, it's a state of New Jersey thing, that block R. All of that, in my opinion, kind of set the stage for Greg Schiano coming in and finally being the right guy for the job. He's a very young guy. I think he's actually the youngest coach in Division I. He's 36 years old. When he was on other coaching staffs, he he daydreamed about coming back to Rutgers to be the head coach at the University of Rutgers. He said, you know, people thought he was kind of unusual to want that, but he really wanted it. And he said, it's going to take a while to build the kind of program we want, but when we build it, it's going to last. First few years were tough. There's no no doubt about it, uh, the highs and the lows. There were just a lot of losses to teams like Villanova or, or UConn when you're wondering, okay, I think people bought into what was happening off the field, but. You know, I think there was there were a lot of questions about when are we going to see this on the field. There were glimpses in 2002. They played Virginia Tech very tight. It is caught for the touchdown for about three quarters. They played very well at Tennessee, which is still to this day the loudest environment I've ever been in. Here's Jones coming out for Rutgers. Big hole. He did a beautiful job down the sidelines and has electrified the Rutgers sideline and has stunned over 100,000 Tennessee fans. Early glimpses that Greg Schiano knew what he was doing, certainly in special teams, something that Rutgers became very well known for. You did see the aggressiveness. Fake the kick and the holder still has And a willingness to make that phase of the game as important as the other phases, understanding that in college football, which is you know, has its craziness in ways that the NFL doesn't even. There were opportunities there. And Rutgers increases the lead to 16 So you're starting to see some things moving in the right direction. And then late in the year, you have Miami coming in. And this is a team coming off a national championship that I would contend is the greatest college football team of all time. And Rutgers is beating them and news crews from New York are scrambling down the turnpike. And he's in, touchdown Rutgers! Is this finally actually gonna happen? Something unthinkable gonna happen. And unfortunately, they didn't have the manpower at that point to match up against the most talented team in the country for four quarters, but they did it for three quarters. And that gave you an idea, hey, maybe we got something cooking here. Attention to detail and everything we were doing in our lives wasn't one that was gonna allow us to win consistently in college football. So, so we had glimpses, but it was a process that coach was working on us on and, and how, you know, how do we learn how to win? And I just thought what he was saying and kind of what we were building was just maximize everything you can do. Maximize the opportunity, maximize your effort, and then after that, everything will pay off after this. Well, I think it was the first game of the year, my junior year, 2004, home game against Michigan State. Obviously, the fan base felt us growing from year two to year three. Big blitz is on, and it's intercepted! Ryan Neal had an interception on the screen to score a touchdown to put us up, and we had a big win over Michigan State. History being made today at Rutgers Stadium. My junior year, we're on the road at Vanderbilt uh, SEC School. Jay Cutler's the quarterback for Vanderbilt, and uh, we're getting blown out at the half. I think we were down by 20-some points. You know, really a perfect example of us learning the process, 
We're learning to chop wood, one play at a time. The final result there was we came back and we won the football game. And, you know, it was moments like that that started to build the program. For a big game in this program's history. Those sort of moments were, were huge, huge moments early on to just build confidence in, in the vision that Coach Shiano was sharing with him. This program will be on the march. And I think the other inroads that Greg made right away were in recruiting. And I don't say that that resulted in five-star players coming immediately, because it didn't. But it was an ability to evaluate talent that had been missing, and it was finding you know, to use a sports cliche, diamonds in the rough, guys who maybe were not as heavily recruited other places. Brian Leonard was the first, you know, breakthrough, I think, not only as a recruit, but the way he performed on the field, Ray Rice. And across those years, we could go through guys who made the NFL, the McCourty brothers, things. Like the level of player was definitely getting better, and it was where they were coming from. Now, Greg knew what to do. He could go back to Miami, and he had a great connection to the Miami area. He mined the places he knew. He went to Canada, Jamal Westerman, I remember. You know, that there were places he was finding players that were looking for an opportunity, and then he finally started making inroads in New Jersey. It's, it's really amazing what this guy, who, who's from this state, has done. He's starting to keep the talent. There's so much talent in the state. He's keeping it here, and this is not the Rutgers that you're used to seeing. So you're, you're in high school, you commit to Rutgers, and the reason being is you believe in Coach's vision. And he's telling us, look, your class is going to be the class to turn this thing around. Your class will be the foundation of Rutgers football getting to an elite level. I believe in Coach Yano. You know, the, the, the guy, he sold me right away when I first met him. My father's actually retired lieutenant colonel in the state police. Uh, so he kind of reminded me of an extension of my father. When I was sitting in his office, I can remember him saying, we're going to be really good. <laughs> like, I remember him saying, like, listen, it's built right. Everything's here. We're going to do it. That was laid out in the recruiting process, right? Him saying, like, this is going to be hard. This isn't going to be a cakewalk. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to win a lot of football games, but we're going to work really hard to do it. Um, the other part that I thought, you know, he definitely held true was the fact that, you know, He's going to teach you life lessons that carry you on for the rest of your life, right? Things like time management, things like, you know, chop, which obviously is a word that has a deeper meaning. But, you know, I see myself doing that in my everyday life. And everything he said happened. And it, and it was because of hard work. We all came here and we just bust our tails. Like, in the weight room, we went so hard. We held e each other accountable. And it was some of the best moments of my life. It's always special to see him put, you know, put the go get a recruit and put him into a position where he can excel, um, not just on the field, but in life. It's, it's a special thing to see. He started identifying just players that if he maximized their potential and continued to get them better, he knew he could be competitive with these type of guys. And a lot of it was character. You know, the leader never had any quit, and, and that made a big difference, you know, in, in continuing to move the process forward continuing to, you know, become the program that we were able to become. At RWJ Barnabas Health, we thank you for all your sacrifices, for staying home, for putting off visits for the sake of others, for sending us food and messages to uplift our spirits. And we thank you, New Jersey, for trusting us to take every precaution as we safely welcome you back. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. 2005, opening game, Big Ten School at Illinois. Great game. Um, we start to lose momentum in the third and fourth quarter, and we end up losing an overtime heartbreaker. And we thought that that was going to take the, the wind out of our sails our senior year. But again, coach is all about mantras and mottos, and I believe that's when the, the keep chopping originated. We're on the road, a Big Ten team, and we jump out ahead. And I think that's the story that you hear about how, how did keep chopping start. You know, it was there, it was at Illinois, because, you know, we were, we were out and headed, and we thought we were going to win the game, and this was it, we were going to go. We're going to go on this run, and they came back, they beat us. And, and the message I remember, Coach, after that, uh, he talked about uh, what was ultimately going to take us to the next level, which was this concept of just keep chopping. And, and the chop was was really, you know, our cue to 
you know, focus on the process, to focus on one play at a time. No matter what's going on, whether it's in your life or it's on the field, you know, just focus at that task at hand and move forward. And I remember that Sunday, really that whole week after that when we came in, just guys were talking about it and an entire program just was, they were all in. 2005, man, that was a, yeah, we got more wins, I think. You know, the, we had the a young class coming in. We had a lot of the younger guys that ended up playing 2005. It, it was fun. It was very fun witnessing my freshman counterpart, Ray Rice, play as a freshman, Courtney Green playing as a freshman. Brian Leonard was a leader of the team. So we, we had some pieces, and we were just figuring it out as a, as a team how to win, how to close games. You had these wins come during the year. You go to Syracuse, and you win on the road. You go to Connecticut, and Ryan Hart comes off the bench, leads a great comeback in the rain. And that was a memorable moment. And momentum is shifting. You can see it. It's coming. When I was a student at Rutgers, and for many years beyond, we would joke that bowl was like a four-letter word on campus. Like, you couldn't say it because Rutgers, that was the thing. They'd never gone to a bowl game. And now I'm talking about an era before there were 8,000 bowl games, right? Like, it was a huge deal to get to a bowl game. We had five wins. We were at home versus Navy. The place was just packed. And I think just the energy in the stadium that day, that this was going to be it. We we're going to beat Navy and we're going to go. We're going to go to a bowl. And I remember just literally the clock counting down and everybody, I think the entire stadium, you know, people rushing the field and just the excitement that we did it. You know, we got to six, finally. You know, we're gonna go to a bowl. It was so many years of frustration to enjoy this extra special moment that they had never had before. I'll never forget Chase Field that night being equal. Arizona State, which is four miles away, and Rutgers, which is 2,500 miles away. They're gonna throw. The tight end. And folks, was that an impressive drive by an underdog? It felt like a home game in a lot of ways. You had James Gandolfini out there for the coin toss as an honorary Rutgers captain. It was incredible. So for Greg to break through and get a bowl invite was incredible cause for celebration on this campus. And anybody who doesn't understand that just doesn't get Rutgers football. I mean, he did. He did it. Other people had tried so many for so long and so hard, and Greg was the one who finally broke through and got a team to a bowl game. Play fake. They got another first down with him. He's everywhere. Down the sideline. Touchdown, Rutgers. You know, to, to leave knowing we made it to a bowl game and, and, and left a long-term impact on the program was enormous. I know we lost that game, but it was a back and forth game and it was just awesome to be a part of that and that really set us up for the future moving forward. To be honest with you, it was kind of like bittersweet because um, you don't want to celebrate losing. It's like you got a ring for going to the inside bowl. But we didn't win the game. That feeling in your stomach as a player, you're like, man, we came all the way out here, we had a great time, but taking that L, it kind of refocuses you again, like, all right, it's fun to go to the bowl game, but that next step is winning the bowl game. If going to the inside bowl was everything that you came to Rutgers for, and we lost the game and got a ring, then this is probably not the place for you. So the motivation for next year became even, even, like, deeper. The Scarlet Knights of Rutgers have been one of the biggest surprises in all college football. 2006. To me, still exists. Sometimes I think it's like a fever dream, you know, for Rutgers football fans because it's it, it's still so incredible to think of the atmosphere. I remember early on they they won a couple games or three and zero, and you looked at the schedule and you started to say, okay, you know, this this is kind of breaking well for this team. I mean, if they could just keep this going and keep this momentum going, you know, there's no reason that they couldn't be seven and zero, eight and zero, and, and that's what they got. This year, it's all turned around for the Rutgers D, and they are currently leading the nation in scoring defense. Underwood, touchdown, Rutgers! We had worked so hard that offseason, and I could really say, sit here and say that hard work pays off because we found ways to win those games. That year was about the chop. That year was, you don't get this far to lose. That season had taken on so much excitement 
win after win after win, and Ray Rice had obviously emerged as, you know, one of the best players in the country. How about that? Touchdown number 12 on the year. You go on the road to Navy, a, a place that had always been difficult to play, and dealing with the triple option was so difficult, and you just completely dominated that game. 34 nothing, and then you go to Pittsburgh, and you're facing a team that has an awful lot of NFL talent, not the least of which is Darrell Reeves. Really. You know, and I, Ray Rice, I think, in the, in the Scarlet Knights got on the map nationally after this game, going on the road and showing that they could play with a team that at that point was playing with a lot of confidence. You had a strange feeling with the Connecticut game because it was on a Sunday night, you're 7-0, everybody's kind of looking ahead and seeing that it might be two undefeated teams on Thursday night football. But Rutgers really didn't look ahead. And again, that same mentality that they kept right in front of them, which was the shot, which was focus on what is sitting in front of you right now and take care of business then. And it just led to an unbelievable atmosphere 10 days later. At RWJ Barnabas Health, we thank you for all your sacrifices for staying home, for putting off visits for the sake of others, for sending us food and messages to uplift our spirits. And we thank you, New Jersey, for trusting us to take every precaution as we safely welcome you back. RWJ Barnabas Health, let's be healthy together. I'm Kayla, and this is what I work for, to teach him to protect her, and to take care of me, too. I need health insurance that does the same, that makes it easier to see a doctor, so I don't have to worry. This is my life, and this is how Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey works for me, and him, and her. On Tuesday, check this scene out. 10,500 Rutgers tickets distributed in about four hours. And many had camped out on Monday oh night. Shiana wades in there and brings like 50 pizzas, which were swallowed up instantly. It still makes me tear up a little bit thinking about it, how incredible it was to just to see the state so behind the program. Manhattan's highest honor, the Empire State Building glows Rutgers Red, a salute to the 8-0 Scarlet Knights, whose kingdom sits 40 miles to the west. It's the birthplace of college football. But this campus is in a football frenzy never witnessed at Rutgers. Students snagging up 10,000 tickets in four hours Tuesday, bracing for the biggest moment ever. It was packed. You know, we had to bring in stands, playing a nationally ranked opponent. We're nationally ranked. The best environment I've ever played in in my entire life. I got to play at Seattle, I got to play at Kansas City, some of the craziest stadiums in the NFL, and nothing tops that Rutgers night versus Louisville. Rutgers, the place is rocking, they're ready, this is their moment in the sun. I remember coming out of that tunnel like, man, this is wild. Look what we, what we built up, and, and Coach's vision was now a reality. Rutgers comes into this game with a belief that they can play now with a team like Louisville. And I think the big reason, of course, it starts with their head coach and what he brings to the table, the confidence that he instills in his team. What stands out from the Louisville game, we went down pretty big early in that game. I remember losing at the half, but something about us, right? We all were calm on the sideline, and we were like, just, just keep chopping. Like, we're going to be OK. Little by little, let's climb back into this game. I, I think at halftime, you're kind of like, well, that was that was a fun ride. Doesn't mean the season's over. You can still make a bowl game, you know? But I, I don't think a lot of people in the press box said they can still win this thing. You said this is not an offense built for the quick comeback, but they need points in a hurry. Now it's Rice. He's around the corner. Ray Rice, headed to the end zone. Yes. Touchdown. <laughs> and I remember scoring and seeing, like, half of the New York Giants there. And they couldn't stop us. 30, 36. Teal has time across the middle. It's high and it's complete. 20 for Dana is good. The freshman in a foot race. Rice, left side. Touchdown. Set. Such a great story of a team that's come from the ground and built themselves up to now where they believe in one another. This is an example if you buy into a team, how much it can benefit you. I mean, it was uh, it was amazing, you know, when, when he hits the field goal, points at the camera. And Rutgers has 
taken a three-point lead with 13 seconds left. I will never, as long as I live, forget the sight, you know, of those last few seconds ticking down, hearing Chris Carlin's call. Drops back. Yeah. He is sacked! Yes. And the Scarlet Knights win it! There is pandemonium in Piscataway! Rutgers has knocked off number three, Louisville! This game, to me, epitomizes the job that Greg Schiano has done at Rutgers. You know, it, it, it's a game that so many people focus on, and you wonder sometimes, is there uh, too much focus put on one game? There's not, because it was the moment that proved that Rutgers belonged. Jubilation in Piscataway. You gotta take your hats off to Greg Schiano and the Rutgers football team. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in congratulating the 2006 Home Depot College Football Coach of the Year, Greg Schiano of Rutgers University. Greg? Coach Schiano probably wouldn't like this, but all the success goes to him. Greg Schiano has taken not only in one football game, he's changed the culture for a college, a university, and a state. When you're going through it, you don't realize the magnitude of what's happening and how many people you affect. But afterwards, when you take a deep breath and you look back, you're like, wow, we really did that. Everybody was pushing towards one goal, right? And that one goal was, it was bigger than you know stats. It was bigger than draft days. I'm lucky because not only did I play here and get to experience that, now I get to coach here and go through it again. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to this, to this journey. This football team chopped for 60 minutes. We said it was going to take 60 minutes. By golly, you guys brought 60 minutes. I can't tell you how proud I am. I can't tell you how proud the coaches are of the way you guys chopped.